My name is Marilee Beasley. I have been a resident of Jersey Village for almost 40 years. I raised my children here. I'm a certified school teacher, a reading specialist. I'm also a registered nurse and I have an MBA. These are my concerns about the future of Jersey Village. A few months ago, I began to regularly attend monthly city council meetings and I did presentations. I did a lot of research for these presentations. I often brought handouts for the city council members to review. I started looking deeper into matters and now I have many questions. My understanding is that Jersey Village has had four major floods. These floods were in 1998, 2001, 2002, and 2016. A report was done by Brooks and Sparks in 2003 to look at the problem. After the tax day flood in 2016, another flood study was completed with the previous data by Dannenbaum Engineering. The data for the studies was provided by engineers, geologists, and a hydrologist. These scientists are residents of Jersey Village. These residents collected the data over several years. The second study appears to have been completed by using the data from the original Brooks and Sparks study done in 2003. Dan and Baum did computer modeling for their report. My understanding is that no one from Dan and Baum ever thoroughly walked along the bayou as they should have done for the study. In addition, the study did not examine some of the problem areas of the bayou during that report. Sadly, the study by Dannenbaum, which included data collected by Jersey Village citizens and was done previously by Brooks and Sparks, cost the citizens over $700,000. Why did the City Council agree to this study that did not thoroughly examine the underlying causes? Why did they pay so much money for this? That is not logical to me. One of the recommendations from the study was that the berm should be built at the Jersey Village golf course. I understand that the recommended berm height has been lowered by several inches. I believe that more than one engineer has commented that with the lowered height of the berm, there is no longer any point in building the berm. The tax day flood occurred in April 2016. It has been three years since that event. It does not seem as though much has been done to address these issues which could have already been addressed. The city has recently received over $3 million in grant money from the federal government. My understanding is that money is to be used for things like elevating houses. For this first phase, there were 238 structures which were destroyed during the flood. I see two serious problems with this situation, as only 18 houses will be repaired at this time. One problem is at this rate, it will take about 12 years to finish the last house to elevate. Another problem is that not all houses were destroyed by the flood. We will end up with an uneven look to the homes on the streets. It seems to me that the money could be spent on floodproofing homes or buying very large moats to put around houses before the next storm that comes to Jersey Village. Jersey Meadow is the municipal golf course which the citizens of Jersey Village own. The golf course is a municipal enterprise owned by the citizens and should make money because of the citizen ownership. Last June, Dr. William Beasley, an engineer, presented to the City Council data which indicated that the golf course lost almost $600,000 last year and about $3,400,000 for the last 10 years. Dr. Beasley mentioned that the citizens are bailing out a golf course. Unfortunately, hardly any of the golfers at the golf course are residents of Jersey Village. Why does the Jersey Meadow Golf Course not have a business plan? That does not seem logical to me. There is a new golf course convention center. Why was a feasibility study, which would be funded by the Hotel Occupancy Tax Fund, not conducted as it should have been? Why was there not an appropriate business plan for it from the start? Why isn't there an appropriate business plan for it now? This is not logical to me. Okay. Recently, it was revealed that the City Council worked out an agreement with a developer for the land known as Jersey Crossing. There is a plan to put the City Hall in this development. My understanding is that several years ago, the citizens voted against moving the City Hall to another location. 
Now the new development, which will obligate the citizens for 30 years and will cost the developer at least $145 million in the beginning of the project, has been approved. Why did the City Council agree to this without citizen approval? This does not seem logical to me. It seems to me that the citizens of Jersey Village are being left out of the process. City business is conducted cl behind closed doors during executive sessions. Even when the citizens voice their opinions, it doesn't seem to matter. Even when the citizens vote no, it doesn't seem to matter. The city council disregards the will of the people. That does not seem logical to me. After I started attending city council meetings, I realized that I was very qualified to be on city council. After many requests to run for JV city council, I decided it was time to give back to the citizens and to the future of the city. My children live in Jersey Village. I have an extensive background working with more than one very large government organization. I have been involved with training for government compliance I also understand government compliance, and I've been involved with safety training. I'm very familiar with the process. I've re received additional training in process improvement and statistics. I have an extensive background in the healthcare field. The healthcare field is a highly regulated business. I have an extensive background in the education field. That is in a highly regulated government area. I was involved with a new initiative in that field. I have been on boards. I am familiar with the Texas Opens Meetings Act because of my being on boards. I have been very politically active with one of the local parties. I helped a candidate run for Congress. I am familiar with the process of getting elected. I trust that as a voter, you will look at my background and decide whether I have the knowledge and dedication to do this job. I believe that I have lots of real world experience.